Nagasaki Noisy Boys. It's a Wu Tang war whistle. <laughs> Greasy old Mongolian motor mangler. Japanese juice jet. Chinese choo choo boy. Korean air cannon. Yin Yang spinny thang. Beijing blockbuster. Ching Chang spinny thang. So we all love turbos. Between the noises they make and the power they produce, we can probably all agree there's nothing better than a properly set up turbocharged gas powered vehicle. When it comes to choosing the right turbo or identifying your goals for a turbo, or even just understanding the words and lingo that are used when you walk around a car show, there's a lot that can be misinterpreted. In this video today, we're gonna to cover not only the terms that are used, but we're gonna guide you along the way. We're gonna give you some resources to identify the proper turbo for your build. We're gonna educate you on how to ensure that you're treating that turbo with respect and you're getting the best life out of that turbo. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video where you can enter a giveaway for an exclusive new product first ever MA Performance hats being offered to the public. You can get your hands on it before anyone else if you just watch all the way to the end and enter our giveaway. So as I said in today's video, we're just gonna cover the basics. We're gonna stay really on a, a 101 scale. We're just gonna tell you the names and talk about some of the different things that separate turbos. If you'd like to see us dive deeper into any of the specifics, please leave a comment below, ask the difficult question. I'm here to answer those questions. We will take time out to make a video about specifics if you guys want us to go into ARs or the differences and the benefits of different sized flanges of turbos. Uh, just go ahead and leave those comments. Share, the, share your knowledge again below and, uh, and have fun guys, this is gonna be a great video. When it comes to turbos, there's a lot of different names people like to use. Some people wanna talk about the flange size and, and call their turbo a T3 or a T4. Other people wanna to refer to uh, the millimeters of their turbine or compressor wheels. And uh, there's just a lot of names out there. We wanna give you a basic overview. We're not gonna to dive too in depth on any one piece of these. We just wanna give you a basic overview so you can understand what people are talking about when they're using terms like AR, turbine housing, uh, flange size, and that sort of thing. When someone says they have a 62 mil or, or say an 80 mil turbo, what they're talking about is the, uh, the compressor wheel on their turbo and the size of that. The inducer wheel is right here. This is the uh, tip to tip measurement is what they're talking about uh, of the cold side of the turbo. This is where the air is coming into the turbocharging system and being compressed before it's forced into the engine. Uh, common reference, like I said, you'll hear at car shows or even at the racetrack is to reference this number, 80 mil, 62 mil, 58 mil. Those are all commonly things uh, you're gonna hear when you're talking about turbochargers. It's just easier to, to know what that is and to be able to reference it uh, when you're speaking with your friends about their turbochargers or, or again, your turbocharger future setups. Uh, the next common term we hear used a lot is uh, referencing the flange size of a turbo. So there is a multitude of different flanges, uh, way more extreme than we're gonna get into today. But the common ones I hear as I walk around car shows or I talk to uh, owners, they say I have a, a T3 or a T4 turbo. What that's referencing is these flanges we have out front here. Uh, and again, they come in different sizes, they come in divided, uh, stainless steel or mild steel. Those are all just different flanges, but what we're talking about is the actual size. So we have a T3 versus a T4, T4 versus a T4 divided, and or V-bands. That's what people are talking about when they say I have a T3 or a T4 turbo. Uh, Dominic, T3, T4 turbo is, uh, is what they're referencing the flange there, so. Another common thing people like to reference when they're talking about the turbo on their car or the turbo they want to put on their car, or just turbos in general, is referencing the bearing style. Uh, a lot of people will talk about a ball bearing unit or a journal bearing unit. I've asked plenty of people, what turbo do you have? And they say, I have a ball bearing turbo. Well, that doesn't really tell you much about the power output of the turbo. It does tell you about the center section and how the turbo uh, is assembled in the center section, uh, but it doesn't actually explain much about the performance and or the power output. So uh, just know that that's a generality we're talking about. There's journal bearing, there's ball bearing. There's also some in-betweens there, especially in the Borg lineup uh, that are proprietary to them. And uh, that's just what people are referencing when they're talking about the bearing cartridge inside of a turbo. It's important to notice that each manufacturer is a little bit different in the way that they rate their turbochargers, uh, even the way that they maybe compare and size their turbochargers. Um, it's not something we're gonna go into in depth today. It might be some for the future, but today we just wanna make sure that you're aware there's not always gonna be a comparison between one turbo and the other of different brands. Someone's 66 millimeter turbo may produce more or less power than someone else's 66 millimeter turbo. And there's gonna be a lot of variables that determine that. It's just important to know that not only are they different, 
There's also a lot of proprietary products, especially when it comes to things like V-bands, uh, oil drain fittings, even some flanges are gonna be proprietary for certain turbos. It's very important that you know that prior to choosing your turbo because things are gonna make a difference when you go to bolt them all together. And they might not line up and they might not work well together. Now that we've covered some of the basic terminology that goes along uh, the lines of turbochargers, the next big thing we need to know is understand the different types of turbochargers, the things from bolt-in turbochargers to universal, uh, and what's gonna work right for you and, and how to set your goals and your expectations properly before you start to search and buy a turbocharger. I like to start by asking myself why. I wanna understand why I'm upgrading my turbocharger. Uh, I wanna make sure that I have not only my short-term goals, but also my long-term goals in mind. A few tips that I would give you is definitely reference your tuner. Speak to them, uh, talk about what, you, maybe your engine builder as well, to identify what your car is currently capable of. They're gonna give you feedback, they're gonna help point you in the right direction. Obviously, you can give us a shout. We have a lot of experts here that have uh, not only built cars, but, but help people like yourselves determine the right turbo for their car as well. Just like any other modification to a car, there's a lot of variables that we have to take into account when we're determining what the best product for us is. In this case, you may have a turbocharged car from the factory. You're probably gonna be uh, a little bit further along or, or the engine in that platform may be a little bit more capable than a car that didn't come with a turbo from the factory. So knowing what you want and, and what car you're starting with is gonna help determine whether you want to start with a drop-in or a, a, just a, a stock frame turbo replacement, or if you need to go with an all-out turbo kit that comes with things like a turbo manifold, a downpipe, uh, potentially intercooler, et cetera. So once you've identified what your platform is, that'll help you move along in the right direction to establish if you're looking for a drop-in replacement turbocharger, potentially you're gonna send your factory turbocharger out to be upgraded, or if you're looking for a complete turbo kit to utilize a universal turbocharger uh, to boost your application. There's certainly advantages to having a turbocharged car from the factory. As I mentioned, you can probably get away without a turbocharger uh, or an upgraded manifold. You, you can stick with the stock frame manifold. You're gonna be able to feed boost to this thing pretty easily through a stock frame manifold. There's always gonna be aftermarket options for improvements as far as uh, spool characteristics and top end power, but uh, definitely gonna be cheaper to upgrade the turbo in most cases than it is to buy a complete turbocharger kit. Additionally, when it comes to the ease of installation, uh, an aftermarket drop-in turbocharger sometimes can be as easy as six or eight bolts uh, and just a couple sets of hands to get it to fit in there. Whereas installing a full-out turbo kit, especially an aftermarket turbo kit, is generally gonna be a lot more complex. There's a lot more pieces to that kit and it's gonna require a lot more knowledge and skill to get that kit put onto your car uh, and properly fitted. If you're turbocharging a naturally aspirated motor, keep in mind that a lot of times these engines have not been designed to handle very much boost, if any, right? I mean, they came from the factory without boost. They're not gonna handle the power you guys may wanna make. They have maybe cast pistons or thin beam connecting rods. Those things are gonna limit the power that you can make safely on that engine. Whereas a turbocharged car from the factory generally has some beefed up internals uh, and can handle a little bit more boost right out of the gates, it's also important to make sure that you consider the requirement or the, uh, the additional modifications, we call them supporting mods, that you need to run a larger turbo or more boost through a bigger turbo in your car. Just because your car came from the factory with a turbo doesn't mean you can slap in an aftermarket turbo and start cranking things up. You're gonna wanna take into account fueling. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're reducing back pressure through your exhaust, increasing airflow through your intake track, and then also uh, just keeping in mind what your engine is actually capable of. Most of these factory turbocharged cars are starting with small four-cylinder engines. You're not gonna be able to make a thousand horsepower on a lot of these bottom ends. So guys, just be realistic, keep those things in mind, and I think we're gonna have uh, a lot of success finding you the right turbo as we move forward. So a big question everyone wants me to answer is which turbo should I buy? Unfortunately, I don't have an easy, simple answer to that because every case is gonna be different. But now we've established your goals for your individual needs, I'm gonna provide you with a couple quick tips and some resources to help you identify the perfect or ideal turbocharger for your setup. So in order to figure out which turbo you need, basically you're gonna have to run some calculations. It's not the most difficult math out there, especially when the equations are put straight in front of you. 
but you are going to need to be able to answer some basic questions about your engine. Uh, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to want to determine the volume and the mass of airflow that you want flowing through your engines and then we're going to ideally pick a turbocharger that meets those requirements. We on our website at maperformance.com list out most of the horsepower ratings for different turbos. You can even sort and search by different turbo horsepower ratings. Also, we have an additional turbo size calculator that uh, if you work with your tuner or engine builder, I think you'll be able to get the numbers specific to your build that'll help you achieve and run through that calculator to achieve the results. Uh, it's gonna list out a few different turbo options for you and really help point you in the right direction to what's ideal for your circumstances. Additionally, Check out Garrett in Motion. Uh, Garrett Turbochargers has a lot of resources around this. Some great calculators to help you figure out how much power uh, you can make with certain turbos they offer. And then also what sort of airflow and compressor maps are offered in the complete line of Garrett turbos, including uh, their bolt-on turbos for like our Evo X and some of the other cars that are a little bit more popular for us. So with turbochargers, it's like a lot of other things in life, uh, the, the old sayings of uh, you get what you pay for, or if the deal's too good to be true, it probably is. Those things really apply to turbochargers. When it comes to a quality aftermarket turbocharger, the amount of research and development that goes into that product is far beyond what I think most people imagine. They start uh, at the metallurgy level. So they're starting at the raw materials and components that are then melted down and assembled to turn into things like the turbine shaft or, or the compressor wheel. When you talk about using cheaper, inferior products, it's definitely gonna lower the cost for the consumer, but there's also not gonna be that level of quality that we all look for when we're putting a turbocharger on our engine. It's one thing to look and try to stay cost effective, but hopefully you guys understand buying cheap in this case can lead to a lot of risk. Not only as far as uh, longevity and performance, but also safety. OE turbocharger units have to be uh, combustion, they have to confine, that, that burst confinement is what they call it. So if something were to explode inside an OE turbo, it's gonna stay confined in this. If you guys go ahead and do a Google search, maybe we'll throw some pictures up in the video of turbos that have exploded and not been confined. If you can imagine how fast that turbo wheel is spinning, when that shrapnels and breaks, those little chunks of turbine wheel and metal get everywhere and can really cause not only serious bodily harm, but even death. So guys, be serious about your, your game when it comes to cars. Do this right the first time and, and just put a little bit more money towards buying the proper turbo for your car. Lastly, one tip I always give people is, is make sure you know your future goals of your car. Just like if you reference back to our project, uh, project car video. If you buy a turbo for the requirements or the goals you have today, without considering what your build may look like next year or the year after, it's a surefire way to ensure that you end up with not only one turbo purchase, but two or more turbo purchases. And we all know uh, every time I'm, uh, at least my wife sees those things come home, she just sees money flying out the window. So be careful guys, do it right the first time and I think you're gonna enjoy building your car a lot more. All right guys, so we've covered some of the basic turbo nomenclature. Again, we can go deeper into any of those and we probably will in some future videos, especially if you tell me to in the comments below. Uh, we've touched on setting goals and understanding the different types of drop-in versus universal turbocharger. Explained some flanges, some differentiators there. Talked about the proprietary assets that may come when talking about different brands of turbochargers. Lastly, what we wanted to do is just give you a couple quick tips on how to extend the life of your turbo. This is just a few tips from our experts here things we've learned along the way, uh, and I think they'll be useful for you as you guys kind of journey on down, either putting a turbo on your car or upgrading a turbo, or potentially uh, just starting to learn about turbos. These are still things that are gonna benefit you, so here we go. First, do not shut down your car while it's hot. Big thing back in the 90s, okay, late 90s, early 2000s, kind of dating myself here, but uh, everyone had a turbo timer. These were a cool little electronic device that would keep your turbo moving and keep oil flowing through your turbo even after a car was shut down. They've kind of gone to the wayside. They're still available on our website if you want them. Um, but what people generally do now is they just allow their car to idle. If you go out for a spirited drive or you make a rip in your car, completely shutting down your car when the engine is hot and that oil is hot is gonna cause uh, a shorter lifespan of your turbocharger unit. Letting the car cool down at idle, 
kind of removes and draws all that heat out of the turbo so that you're not just doing a hot shutdown. That's certainly gonna extend the life of your turbo. The next big piece uh, to remember and a tip that we have for you is just to make sure that you have some sort of crankcase ventilation, especially when you're turbocharging a car that didn't come from the factory with the turbocharger on it, you are going to uh, see increased pressure in that system. And a lot of times that oil will actually be able to work its way up the turbo drain and into the turbo. It'll actually blow uh, oil past the exhaust side of the turbo is the most common one we see. If it's a really severe situation with a lot of built up crankcase pressure, it'll even push through the compressor side. Uh, that can cause a lot of issues and really cut down life or even just uh, make your turbo inoperable. So be careful on that. Make sure you have some proper crankcase ventilation set up. And if you have any questions on that, feel free to give us a shout. We can help you set those up uh, pretty easily. It just depends on your build the size of lines, how much ventilation you need, those sorts of things. One major tip I think is overlooked by people that are new to building cars is the turbo oil flow. If you have a, uh, an oil feed line that is coming in at an angle or maybe the turbo location is a little bit odd, uh, those are things that can impede the oil flow. Knowing your turbo, knowing your setup, knowing your placement, uh, and looking at that and that holistic approach of is the oil flowing in and out of my turbo properly is step one. If you guys don't have proper oil flow coming out, say you've maybe used a, uh, a universal oil drain flange on a precision turbo, you're going to have some turbo buildup that's gonna cause improper draining, potentially back up into that turbo and have that same oil pouring out through the exhaust side or the compressor side of that turbo. So very important guys, keep good oil flow going in and out of your turbo. Uh, oil restrictor is another one. There's not a, a blanket statement here, but generally on ball bearing turbos is where we would run those. Um, again, feel free to give us a call. This information is all readily available through us just with a quick phone call. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. So as we promised earlier in this video, we got a pretty exciting giveaway, guys. We just got these hats. It's the first ever MA Performance hat we've sold to the public. We have a lot of swag that we get internally for employees, but this is just for you. Before we sell it to anyone else, you can get entered to win this hat. I'm gonna choose the winner. And the way you enter is just commenting below with your favorite slang term for a turbocharger. Whether you wanna call it a turb ski or a Chinese choo-choo boy or a Nagasaki noisemaker, go ahead and blow my mind in the comments. I wanna see thousands of comments with your favorite slang term for a turbocharger. Taiwan wind whistle. Korean air cannon. Nagasaki noisemaker. Vietnamese vortex. Hopefully this video is helpful. Uh, it's gonna help you not look like an idiot when it comes to car shows, educate you a little bit on some of the terminology that comes when we're talking about turbos. Uh, it's safe to say that everyone uses different terminology, so I don't think anyone should feel stupid. I think if you ask questions about when someone references what they're talking about and uh, AR sizes or turbo, don't feel like you're an idiot, but make sure if you have any questions that you ask me. Uh, it's anonymous, you guys can post up below uh, and go ahead and like, subscribe. Make sure that you are also commenting on some of the comments of uh, the turbo slang. It's a big one for me. I need your guys' help finding the winner because if it's just on me, I'm probably gonna choose the wrong guy. I need you to help me. Like all your favorite comments below and uh, we'll see you in the next video, guys. Have a great day.